Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I cry to you all the day long. O Lord, you are good and forgiving, full of mercy to all who call to you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Very warm welcome to you for this Mass. I say warm welcome, I feel as though the temperature has slightly dropped today which makes me very glad of all these extra layers. Um, We are offering this Mass for the repose of the soul of Ernst Bobbert. My brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, Put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. You have seduced me, Lord, and I have let myself be seduced. You have overpowered me, you were the stronger. I am a daily laughingstock, everyone's butt. Each time I speak the word, I have to howl and proclaim violence and ruin. The word of the Lord has meant for me insult, derision, all day long. I used to say, I will not think about him. I will not speak in his name any more. Then there seemed to be a fire burning in my heart, imprisoned in my bones. The effort to restrain it wearied me. I could not bear it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. For you, my soul is thirsting, O Lord, my God. For For you, you, my my soul soul is thirsting, thirsting, O Lord, Lord, my my God. God. O God, you are my God. For you I long. For you, my soul is thirsting. My body pines for you like a dry, weary land without water. For you, you, my my soul soul is thirsting, thirsting, 
O Lord, Lord, my God. So I gaze on you in the sanctuary to see your strength and your glory. For your love is better than life. My lips will speak your praise. For you, you, my my soul soul is thirsting. thirsting. O Lord, Lord, my God. So I will bless you all my life. In your name, I will lift up my hands. My soul shall be filled as with a banquet. My mouth shall praise you with joy. For you, you, my my soul soul is is thirsting. thirsting. O Lord, Lord, my God. For you have been my help. In the shadow of your wings I rejoice. My soul clings to you. Your right hand holds me fast. For you, you, my my soul soul is thirsting, thirsting, O Lord Lord, my my God. God. A reading from the letters of St. Paul to the Romans. Think of God's mercy, my brothers, and worship him, I beg you, in a way that is worthy of thinking beings by offering your living bodies as a holy sacrifice, truly pleasing to God. Do not model yourselves on the behaviour of the world around you, but let your behaviour change, modelled by your new mind. This is the only way to discover the will of God and know what is good, what it is that God wants, What is the perfect thing to do? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. May the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ enlighten the eyes of our mind so that we can see what hope his call holds for us. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus began to make it clear to his disciples that he was destined to go to Jerusalem and suffer grievously at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes, to be put to death and to be raised up on the third day. Then, taking him aside, Peter started to remonstrate with him. Heaven preserve you, Lord, he said. This must not happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle in my path, because the way you think is not God's way, but man's. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone wants to be a follower of mine, let him renounce himself and take up his cross and follow me. For anyone who wants to save his life will lose it. But anyone who loses his life for my sake will find it. What then will a man gain if he wins the whole world and ruins his life? Or what has a man to offer in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man is going to come in the glory of his Father with his angels And when he does, he will reward each one according to his behavior. The Gospel of the Lord. I love sweets. I particularly love sherbet lemons, especially when you can crack them open with your teeth and all that lovely fizzy powder bubbles out of the middle. You know what to get me for my Christmas present. Uh, My poor parents probably had a nightmare uh, if ever they had to take me around the supermarket as a child. 
and they must have taken great pains to avoid the sweetie aisle at all costs. I remember one day I was permitted to choose a few sweets. What I recall doing is stuffing an entire paper bag full of sweets right up to the brim. I imagine my mum or dad, I can't remember which, uh, must have said to me, Thomas, how can you be so badly behaved? I'm never going to let you go around the sweetie aisle again. It's from an early age, I think, that we are all conditioned to believe that behavior is always about reward or punishment. If we're well behaved, we might earn a reward. But if we're badly behaved, well, you can expect a punishment. There is truth in that. There is a good way to, to teach a child But it would be interesting to know how many people end up thinking about faith in a similar way. If I do good things, God will love me and I will be blessed like the saints. But if I do bad things, well, best not to think about that. Perhaps some people try to take a more balanced approach. If I can just do enough good things, hopefully everything will be okay in the end. Please can I offer you some words of reassurance this morning. God already loves you infinitely. And no matter what, nothing will ever make him love you less. I'm not making that up. St. Paul explicitly tells us this at the end of Romans chapter 8. If you've never read that, it is, in my opinion, it's one of the most beautiful passages on the love of God. Nothing, he says, will separate us from the love of God. We do not need to earn God's love. The question is, there's always a question, always a but, if God already loves us infinitely and perfectly, then what on earth does he expect of us? Why can't we just sit back, relax, and enjoy his perfect love? Well, I think this is the reason. He wants us to learn how to choose his divine will in everything that we do. Why? Because he wants to transform our lives. He wants to watch us grow and flourish. A bit like the prophet Jeremiah uh, in the first reading. He wants our experience of his presence, the reality of his presence, to become so overwhelming that we won't be able to resist it overflowing from our hearts and into the lives of others. He wants us to evangelize the whole of Guildford. And it is possible that we can do that through the power of the Holy Spirit, pouring out through our hearts by recognizing his presence there. Today, in the gospel, in asking us to follow him, Jesus is inviting us to make a response to the love that God already has for us. And in the second reading, again, St. Paul to the Romans, chapter 12, a bit later on, uh, St. Paul describes what this response to Jesus might look like. He says this, Offer your living body to God as a holy sacrifice. What does that mean? Well, I think it means we need to give everything that we are, and everything that we do, over to God, over to Jesus. Christian behavior 
if we really must try to define it, is exactly that. To make Jesus welcome in every aspect of our life. Sometimes we will fail in this. We're all sinners. We're all sinners. But that, won't, that still won't stop God from loving us. In his infinite love, he is always merciful. As St. Paul said at the start of the reading today, Think of God's mercy and worship him. Like a truly loving parent, God, our Father, will always give us a fresh start, a new opportunity, always. We know this because of the promise Jesus made today that he will die for us and rise for us. A really useful practical thing that we can do to make a holy sacrifice of ourselves to God uh, is what St. Ignatius would call the examine prayer. Perhaps if you're familiar with it, perhaps you do it already. Basically, throughout your day, choose to invite Jesus in by the following three ways. Ask him to help you in whatever it is that you're doing. Apologize to him if things go wrong. And finally, say thank you to him when things go well. Please, sorry, and thank you. Three very simple things. And at the end of the day, we can reflect on how things have gone and consider how tomorrow has the potential to be different. Every day is a fresh start. If you're very busy at the end of the day and all you want to do is flop into bed, then maybe try to catch opportunities during the course of the day, uh, on the train, uh, making your way to work, or I suppose (laughs) during the pandemic, making your way to work might mean going from the kitchen to the study, so maybe you need to find another time, but The point is, do whatever you can, do whatever's best for you, uh, but try to make a habit of it, a habit of reflecting on the presence of God in everything that happens during your day. I believe that the more we welcome Jesus in, the more the words of St. Paul, uh, now looking at the end of that reading from today, the more those words can be applied to us. We shall discover the will of God and know what is good, what it is that God wants, what is the perfect thing to do. Praise be Jesus Christ for giving us this way to experience the Father's love. Brothers and sisters, let us now stand to profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery it may accomplish in power. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right to give you thanks, truly just to give you glory, Father most holy. For you are the one God, living and true, existing before all ages and abiding for all eternity, dwelling in unapproachable light. Yet you, who alone are good, the source of life, have made all that is, so that you might fill your creatures with blessings and bring joy to many of them by the glory of your light. And so in your presence are countless hosts of angels who serve you day and night, and gazing upon the glory of your face, glorify you without ceasing. With them, we too confess your name in exultation, giving voice to every creature under heaven as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give you praise, Father most holy, for you are great and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and love. 
You formed man in your own image and entrusted the whole world to his care, so that in serving you alone, the Creator, he might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience he had lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the domain of death, for you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offered them covenants, and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Saviour. Made incarnate by the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin Mary, he shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us, he sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits for those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, may this same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, for the celebration of this great mystery, which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which, we, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church, and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice, that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant Francis, our Pope, Richard, our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people, 
and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with your apostles and saints in your kingdom, there with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, we may glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. 
Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord. As always, it's a truly wonderful joy to be able to celebrate this Mass with you. Obviously, I can't see you, so I assume you're still there to listen to the notices. Uh, not that there are many notices. Um, most everything's on the, on the parish email. Uh, and, and if you don't get the parish email, just a reminder that uh, all you need to do to get it is to apply on the, on the parish website, uh, cpg.church. Um, there's also a wonderful uh, children's liturgy video that's been produced. One is produced every week. So do please encourage uh, all the children in your life to, uh, to take part in that. And of course, this evening, we will have, as we do every Sunday, um, a celebration of Vespers, evening prayer, that is. Uh, and if you have any personal intentions, just a reminder, please do feel free to send them in. It's wonderful to be able to join together as a community of prayer, uh, to be able to pray for each other. Uh, there will also be exposition of the Blessed Sacrament, and, and benediction. Another wonderful way to invite Jesus into your life, uh, Eucharistic adoration. Um, let's also remember to, to continue to pray for the repose of the soul of Ernst Bobbitt, for whom this Mass was offered. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>